the Prince and Princess of Wales. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, continuing to educate you about narcissism. I know that many of you find real-life examples very helpful in aiding your understanding of narcissism, the dynamic, the interaction between the narcissist and our victims. I utilize, therefore, famous and infamous people for the purposes of enabling you to understand more. And, of course, as part of this dynamic, it's not just all about the narcissist. I don't think you'd necessarily think you'd ever hear a narcissist saying that, would you? But it also means that we have to consider other people that exist in the world and our fuel matrices, which include narcissistic individuals, normals, and empaths. And therefore, it's useful to have a compare and contrast between the certain behaviours of a narcissist and those who are not. I've explained elsewhere that Prince William, the Prince of Wales, is a normal. What this means is he does not have an addiction to narcissists. He's not plagued by the emotional thinking that the empath has. He has emotional empathy, and he has it in spades, ordinarily reserved for those closest around him, but, in proximate examples, he will demonstrate it towards other people that he doesn't know. He has empathic and narcissistic traits, but they don't tend to be as strong as those of an empath, and the narcissistic traits aren't as strong as those of a narcissistic or a narcissist. His wife, the Princess of Wales, is an empath. She has strong empathic traits, some strong narcissistic traits, but her empathic traits outrank her narcissistic traits. Of course, if her emotional empathy is reduced by an external stressor, her narcissistic traits can come to the fore. For instance, the Princess of Wales isn't going to be horrible to someone without due cause, and as we've seen recently, she was able to execute a total or rather an almost total no-contact regime with regard to Harry's wife because she was able to control her emotional thinking by the application of logic and recognise that any sensations of guilt were being caused by the corruption of her empathic trait of honesty and that she should put that to one side and apply the logic of knowing it is appropriate that I don't talk to this person to avoid giving her fuel, to prevent her from controlling me, to send her a message and, of course, to reduce my emotional thinking as much as is possible. She executed it perfectly. The Princess of Wales has emotional empathy for a wide range of people and has it in spades, and this is demonstrated by her various behaviours. Of course, she attracts, as does William, brickbats and mudslinging from those that obviously align with the Duchess of Sussex, unable to recognise their kindness, their caring and their compassion, but because of their partisan nature, They've nailed their colours to the mast with regard to supporting the Duchess of Sussex, and therefore it follows in their world this means attacking William and Kate. It's instructive to look at a news item about the Prince and Princess of Wales to see what it describes about their behaviour, but also the way in which it's presented. And we turn to a recent article from the BBC. The Prince and Princess of Wales made their first visit to Wales since they were given the titles. The couple visited Anglesey, where they lived for three years after getting married, and later Swansea. It comes as Kensington Palace said there were no plans for Prince William to have an investiture anything like his father had as Prince of Wales. Meanwhile, the prince revealed he had been learning some words of Welsh, this demonstrates emotional empathy on his part to try and learn the language of the principality of which he is prince. In their first official visit as Prince and Princess of Wales, the royal couple visited the RNLI Holyhead lifeboat station in Anglesey, where they are meeting crew and volunteers. It is the first official duty since the end of the period of mourning following the Queen's death. Dozens of people gathered along the entrance to the lifeboat station. Sean Price used to be the helm on the inshore lifeboat, and her father-in-law is a coxswain. It is a privilege to witness part of this, their first tour, as Prince and Princess of Wales, she said. We couldn't get down to London recently, so it's great they are coming here. 
At Holyhead Marina Cafe, Sandra Armstrong, 44, gave the princess a brooch of a rose because she said she'll be a fantastic princess of Wales. She added, they are inspiring. It felt not real to meet them. Glennis Johnson, 73, who used to work at RAF Valley when the couple lived on Anglesey, waited for the royals at the cafe. She, Kate, told me they had been reminiscing about places they visited in their journey over, Ms Johnson said. They said Anglesey was a happy place for them. She also said William told her he needed to brush up on my Welsh. In 2011, the pair's first official engagement as a couple was to dedicate a new lifeboat at the RNLI station at Triador Bay on the island. Now, notice this is ref referencing something that they had done 11 years ago. But because neither of them are narcissists, the past is not being brought up to control the now. Although the past is being brought up, it's being brought up as a memory, as a reminiscence, and is not done for the purpose of control. Why do we know that? Because they're not narcissists. Ahead of Tuesday's visit, the royals spoke of a deep affection for Wales and said they had enjoyed the warmth and kindness showed by the Welsh people in previous visits. This again refers to previous visits and is flattery. Again, these are behaviours that a narcissist would engage in, but these are not being driven by narcissism where William and Kate demonstrate them. It's being it is being driven by their emotional empathy. So as I've repeatedly explained to you, you can see similar behaviours between that which a narcissist does, that which a normal person does, that which a, an empath does. But the drivers behind them will be different. It's always important to keep that in your mind. The article continues by stating they said the visit would allow them to meet different communities and learn about the work of key charitable organisations and that they look forward to spending more time in Wales over the coming years. If a narcissist were to say these things, that would be future faking and facade management. But again, that's not applicable because that's not what they are. Holyhead is one of the three oldest lifeboat stations on the Welsh coast and has received 70 awards for gallantry. The couple were met by crowds of flag-waving children, which would be the provision of fuel from tertiary sources if they were narcissists. The royals also visited St Thomas's, a redeveloped church in Swansea, which supports people in the local area and across Swansea. Prince William, during the visit, revealed he had started learning Welsh. He, his father had studied Welsh whilst at university in Aberystwyth. William told Reverend Stephen Bunting, he had already picked up the word paned, meaning a cup of tea. I think it just means a cup, but there we are. And barabrith, which I understand, I think, is speckled bread. Uh, Mr. Bunting said, We already know they love Wales, but having them here has been amazing and is an early sign, I think, of their commitment to Wales. I think he's taking being Prince of Wales very, very seriously. The church is home to a food bank that supports over 200 people per week and Swansea Baby Basics, which distribute essential items for vulnerable mothers, such as toiletries and clothes. As part of their visit, the royals also met those volunteering at the church and members of the public. Among them were Janet and Faith Goodlife. Faith said, we've seen King Charles, we've seen the Queen lying in state, and now I think it's time to see our own Prince and Princess of Wales. Following King Charles's announcement that William would take on the title, there was delight for some, but uncertainty from others, with one politician labelling it divisive. The King's investiture as Prince of Wales in 1969, held at Carnarvon Castle, was watched by a TV audience of millions around the world. Street parties were held across the country, but it polarised opinion in Wales and was held amid a backdrop of protests and bombings. Kensington Palace said it currently had no plans for anything like the King's investiture in 1969. It added, right now is about deepening trust with the people of Wales and representing the dynamic Wales that there is today. There are no plans for investiture yet. A petition calling for the Prince of Wales' title to be scrapped has gained more than 35,000 signatures. When Prince William first arrived in Wales in 2010 as an RAF search and rescue pilot, it was as a working member of a community helping to serve those around him. Within just a month of starting work in Anglesey, he and his girlfriend of nine years, Catherine, announced their engagement. They also said that their marital home would remain on the Welsh island once they were married in the spring of 2011. Guillermo Jones, an Anglesey councillor, remembers former colleagues of his who worked at RAF Valley as civilian staff calling William an ordinary guy 
He said he was very popular, you know. He was one of the boys. They weren't hounded by the press and the media. They were allowed to do their own thing. I think that's why they really enjoyed their stay in Anglesey. This report demonstrates the ability of the Prince and Princess of Wales to engage with people, and you can see from the pictures the way that children and other people were involved. Notice also that there's no, there is no suggestion that there were plants. There's nobody suddenly giving a death stare because somebody else is getting the attention. There's no suspicious items being looked at in terms of, oh, what's that? Could it be a recording device? Is it a mic pack? There is no cold stares. There's no grip of doom being utilised. Instead, you see two people who take the issue of service seriously and exhibit their emotional empathy for the people that they are meeting and also their accountability to the point of service. This is, of course, in part done to ensure that there are good relations between the Royals and Wales. So there is a degree of management of the situation, but it's not a facade. Uh, what it is is a genuine interest. Why? Because they're motivated by their emotional empathy to engage with these people. And you can see that their reactions are ones which are natural and not being driven by an artificial approach. It's not being made all about them. It's about the, their stay there previously, the people that they're meeting and listening to their stories. Also, that there's no empty platitudes, no fridge, mag fridge magnet platitudes that are being put forward. And it's a very useful compare and contrast to the way that Harry's wife would engage in such behaviours. It's useful for you to see how a normal and an empath function and operate, where they can engage in similar behaviours to that of the narcissist. But of course, we know that there are different behaviours that are driving them. And of course, many of the things that the narcissist would do on such a visit are absent. Why? Clearly, they're not narcissists and don't have to assert control, don't have to draw in fuel, don't suffer threats to control, don't have to nullify those threats don't have to engage in upstaging or overshadowing, but instead exhibit their emotional empathy by engaging with the people that have come to see them. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.